have already discussed about the covalent bonds, ionic bonds. So covalent bonds, non-polar and polar. Now today we'll be discussing about the non-ionic bonds. So in the non-ionic bonds, they are generally of four types. That is Van der Waals forces, hydrogen bonds, electrostatic forces, and also the hydrophobic bonds. So uh, before discussing about all of them, I want to tell that non-ionic interactions are generally useful for maintaining the three-dimensional structures of proteins. And apart from that, they also maintain very large structures uh, like they hold together the structures like the DNA, the RNA, the proteins. So now let's first discuss about the Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are very weak attractive forces. So in Van der Waals forces, they can be both attractive as well as repulsive forces. So these are electric forces that attract neutral molecules to one another either in the gas or solid or liquid. And now these Van der Waals forces are actually caused by the temporary changes in the dipole. Sorry, in dipole moment. And these temporary changes are caused due to the shift of one atom or molecule adjacent in adjacent atom or molecule. So the Van der Waals forces are actually of uh, three types as I have already discussed. So I will first discuss about the first type which is a attraction between permanent dipoles. In attraction between permanent dipoles we again see two types. So the first type is dipole-dipole interaction. In dipole-dipole interaction we see that they are already a dipole and we know that in dipole there are two charges which is partially positive charge and a partially negative charge. And when it is an attractive force, the negative charge will get attracted to the partial positive charge and the other charge remains towards the other end of the dipole. So similarly, a partially positive charge can get attracted to a partially negative charge and the other charger remains aside. So these two are the attractive forces in dipole-dipole and the repulsive forces is between partially positive and partially positive. So when there are same charges which are towards each other, then there will be a repulsion force. So this is the first example of dipole-dipole. And now we'll go to the second one of the permanent dipoles and that is between ion and dipole. So these are the three different types of Van der Waals interactions. We have already discussed about the interaction between two permanent dipoles, that is dipole-dipole interaction. Now we'll discuss about the ion dipole. So there are two types of ion. One is a cation, the other one is an anion. Cation is positively charged and anion is negatively charged. When a cation is placed near a dipole which is having partially positive charge, it will not attract itself. It will get repelled. But when we place an anion towards the same dipole, it gets attracted because of the opposite charges. Now when we look at the uh, case where there is one permanent dipole and the other one is induced, there will be a cation. And when we place a non-polar substance near it, the positive cation will try to pull electrons. So because of which the dipole is formed with a partial positive side to one, sorry, negative side because it's a cation to one end and partial positive side to the other end. This will cause a slight distortion because electron cloud shifts to the left side in this case. And when this happens, the cation gets attracted and this is a temporary effect. This is temporary effect because it gets worn out 
as soon as this cation is removed away from here. Next, a dipole induced dipole. A similar case of ion induced dipole where there is a dipole and the other one is a non-polar substance. Because of the negative charge over here, the electron cloud tends to shift towards this side and a partial positive side is formed because of which both these dipoles get attracted. So this is also a temporary effect which gets worn out as soon as this dipole is removed from the scene. The third case is between two non-polar substances which is also called as the dispersion forces and this one is also called the London forces. Over here, the interaction between two non-polar substances takes place. Both are non-polar. And this is always attractive because as these are non-polar substances and these are placed side by side to each other, obviously it will uh, have a partially positive charge and negative charge. So this can never, never, never repel, I'm sorry. And the electrode cloud when gets distorted, it will produce more instantaneous dipole or momentary dipole which induces dipole in the neighboring molecule. So this is the case which is seen over here. The third, fourth case which we see is that hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonding, we see that it happens because of a covalent interaction between H and let's take O. So O is having an electronegativity of 3.5 and this is 2.1. So this is a, because the difference is greater than 0.5, this is a polar covalent bond. And over here we see that hydrogen is having partial positive charge and oxygen is having partial negative charge. So uh, can, you uh, can you see and tell in which category does this hydrogen bond come under? Yes, it comes under the first category because it is having partially positive and negative charges and it is not getting induced. So it will not come under second category and it is not non-polar. So it will not come under third category. It will come under the first category and it will come under dipole-dipole interaction. So now let's discuss about the electrostatic and the hydrophobic forces. The electrostatic forces is attractive or repulsive forces wherein the interaction is between charged molecules. So it's similar to a magnet. So when we place two magnets, if it is north pole, north pole, they repel, right? So the similar happens over here. And if it is a south pole, south pole, again they repel. Only when it is a north pole and a south pole do they attract. So similar thing happens over here in electrostatic forces as well. When we place a polar substance with partial positive charge and partial negative charge towards each other, they tend to attract. But when we place a polar substance of partial positive charge and partial uh, positive charge again, it do not attract. It can only come until certain radius after which it won't come together and it ripples. So here it is an attractive force and here it's a repulsive force. So the attractive and uh, force will have a negative energy and repulsive force will have a positive energy. It's denoted by plus sign. This is not by negative sign. Now when we look at the hydrophobic interactions, hydrophobic interactions, it uh, describes the relation between water and hydrophobes. So what are hydrophobes? Hydrophobes are low water soluble molecules low water soluble molecules so and generally because they are not soluble in water hydrophobes are non-polar because all the polar substances will get soluble in water because water itself is a polar molecule so the non-polar molecule will have a usually have a chain of hydrocarbons that do not interact with water. They do not interact with water. So if we look at proteins, the proteins, uh, then there is three dimensional folding of the proteins. And if water is present outside, we see that the hydrophobic forces are present inside. They are present inside the protein 
and they are guarded by the hydrophilic molecules which are present outside. The hydrophilic molecules will interact with the water and because of the hydrophobic pro, uh, amino acids or hydrophobic centers, the three-dimensional uh, structure of the protein is kept intact. So now we'll discuss about the fourth type of bond that is hydrogen bond. And before discussing about the hydrogen bond, I'll talk a little about water. We know that water is made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So oxygen is actually having two lone pairs of electrons and, and one electron is bonded with hydrogen, the other one is also bonded with hydrogen. So in total oxygen is having six electrons, but it needs eight electrons to complete an octet. So it needs two more electrons. So that is why it has bonded with hydrogen. And this structure is seen in water. And we see that there is a bent structure or an angular structure which is making an angle of 104.5 degrees. So this is the angle of water and this is asked in exam also. So we see that the bond over here which is shared between oxygen and hydrogen is a polar covalent bond. You can ask why. Because according to what we have studied, the electronegativity of oxygen is 3.5 and the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1. So the difference of 3.5 minus 2.1 is approximately 1.4. So electronegativity which is great, uh, which is more than 0.5 or it, it is between 0.5 and 2. So it, this will make it polar covalent bond. So now this is a polar covalent bond and in water we generally see that when there is an oxygen which is bound to two hydrogens with a lone pair it has partial positive charge this has partial negative charge this has partial positive charge now it tends to form bonds with these electrons it tends to form bonds with the surrounding hydrogen atom which is carrying a partial positive charge so this will be the structure of other water molecule and this one also will tend to form a bond with another hydrogen which is having a partial positive charge so now this is how water tends to form so as we have already studied this bond is called as the polar covalent bond and this form this form of bonding is called hydrogen bonding so we see that hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular bonding so intermolecular means in between molecules and covalent bond is intra bond which means within a molecule, which means within the molecule of water, the bonding is between hydrogen and oxygen. So it is intra, means inside. And over here, between two molecules of water, there is hydrogen bond, which means it is intermolecules, which means in between molecules. So we have to note about this, the angle of uh, the angle which is made in the water and also the electronegativity difference which is giving rise to the polar covalent bond and also whether it is intra or intermolecular bond is very important. So now as we have discussed about water and also hydrogen bond, we will further proceed with the hydrogen bond. So in hydrogen bonding which we have already seen over here, hydrogen atom is interacting with electronegative atom. So I'll just represent electronegative atom this way. So hydrogen is interacting with electronegative atom. So in this case, the electronegative atom is oxygen. Right. This oxygen won't stay like this. It is also having two lone pairs. So it is also react with another hydrogen. So it keeps on going this way. And that is how water is having bonds with everything and one more thing to be noted over here is that in water the bonds are constantly making and breaking so the bonds are constantly 
मेड एंड ब्रोकन सो इन द हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड हाइड्रोजन इज इंटरक्टिंग विद एन इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिव एटम एज इन दिस केस हाइड्रोजन इज रियक्टिंग विथ और इट इज बॉन्डिंग विथ ऑक्सीजन सो नेक्स्ट थिंग वी हैव टू रिमेंबर इज दैट हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड इज शेयर्ड बाय टू इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिव एटम्स शेयर्ड बाय टू इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिव एटम्स सच एज नाइट्रोजन और ऑक्सीजन सो वी जनरली सी अ डोनार एक्सेप्टर पेयर ओवर हियर I'll draw it and show it to you. So when we consider a water molecule, O H H, so this is having two lone pairs. And when we draw another water molecule over here, uh, O H and H, this is also having two lone pairs. So we see that. this hydrogen now bonds with this lone pair so when it is bonding with here you see that hydrogen is binding with an electronegative atom that is oxygen so this is a donor pair and this one is an acceptor pair so donor is one where hydrogen is tightly bound to electronegative atom Or tightly attached to electronegative atom. And in the case of an acceptor, the electronegative atom is less tightly bound to hydrogen. so this is the difference in an acceptor we see that hydrogen is over here and electronegative atom is over here so this one is less tightly bound to hydrogen over here hydrogen is directly binding strongly binding to electronegative atom so this is a donor pair and this is an acceptor pair hydrogen bond is an intermolecular uh, intermolecular bond which is forming between a donor and an acceptor pair